Ladies and gentlemen, I warmly welcome all of you to the 70th anniversary of RISM, the Repertoire International de Sources Musicales, the International Inventory of Musical Sources. I particular welcome Professor Dr. Klaus Peachmann, the president of the RISM International Organization, Mrs. Pia Skekta, president of the International Association of Music Libraries, Professor Dr. Nicole Schwind, president of the RISM Germany Association. Founded in 1952 in Paris, RISM as the international and largest organization of the documentation of written musical sources is well acknowledged worldwide and contributes significantly to the perpetuation of the cultural heritage. This year, the RISM Association and the RISM Network celebrate their 70th anniversary and take, can take pride in their international and continuing performance. During the years, RISM has developed an intensive commitment to documenting written musical sources scientifically and today it's an international lighthouse project in particular for the humanities. Since the early 1980s, the RISM Central Editorial Office is integrated as a research activity into the German research program for scientific academies. Within this funding mechanism, the RISM Editorial Office has taken the role of a bridge building and uh, of a bridge building interface to various musicological projects. Prospects of the future for the exploitation of musical sources involve both digitalization and the attraction of junior scientists. Digitalization is of strategic importance and has become an important approach for gaining more visibility in our society. Thus, the German government decided to launch an important research data infrastructure initiative, the so-called NFDI, Nationale Forschungsdaten Infrastruktur, the National Research Data Infrastructure. Consequently, RISM has become a partner in NFDI for culture, the National Research Data Infrastructure for culture. In this network, there are also interesting perspectives for a continuation of the RISM's work after 2025, when the present funding of this crucial infrastructure project in global musicology comes to an end. The Mainz Academy of Sciences and Literature supports RISM intensively in its search for long-term secure funding. The attraction of junior scientists is a major task of scientific communities. Due to the new challenges in a rapidly changing world, attracting the next generation of young scientists is a major task for all of us. I want to thank the organizers for their ongoing effort in organizing and managing this conference. For the conference, I do wish inspiring talks, fruitful discussions, and a successful meeting. Last but not least, con congratulations for the 70th anniversary and a happy celebration. Thank you very much. It's a great honor for me to extend Jama's warm congratulations on the 70th anniversary of RISM. As the president of YAML, I'm very proud of the fact that our association, the International Association of Music Libraries, Archives and Documentation Centers, was one of the two founding fathers of the RISM project in 1952 
together with IMS, the International Musicological Society. Our histories have been closely intertwined ever since, and RISM continues to work under the auspices of YAML and IMS, supported by Comiso Mixed, delegated by these two professional associations. Together with the Board of RISM, the Comiso Mixed forms the executive committee that determines the strategic goals of the organization. YAML celebrated its 70th anniversary in 2021. This was the first time YAML held its annual congress entirely online. It was difficult to create a festive atmosphere on Zoom, and therefore the videos with cordial greetings from the representatives of RISM, RILM, RITM, and REDEEM were especially welcome. It was striking that all of them used the family metaphor to describe the intimate relationship between YAML and the R projects, among which RISM is the oldest brother. This year's YAML Congress took place in Prague and finished with a separate RISM day honoring the jubilee. I take the liberty to use this occasion to promote YAML's next Congress, which will take place in Cambridge from 30th of July to 4th of August. You are all very welcome. A preliminary program will be available online in the beginning of next year. I also take this opportunity to inform you that the next issue of YAML's academic journal, Fontes, is dedicated to the RISM anniversary and offers several articles guest edited by the president of RISM, Germany, Nicole Schwindt. RISM grew out of the needs to create a comprehensive inventory of musical sources after the end of, world of World War II, when many libraries had been fully or partially destroyed and collections had been moved around. YAML and RISM are firmly rooted in our respective history, but have at the same time adapted very well to the challenges of the digital era. The freely accessible RISM catalog of musical sources and the newly inaugurated RISM online are nothing less than remarkable when it comes to comprehensiveness, thoroughness, accuracy, and user-friendliness. The fact that the RISM database now has more than 1.4 million records is truly impressive. RISM's vision, knowing what exists and where it is kept, seems to be within reach. Apart from the increasing number of records in the database, there is an ongoing work to improve the catalog through technical developments, expansion of authority data, refined incipit search, etc. On behalf of YAML, I would like to thank the RISM working groups in more than 35 countries for their dedication to this global project. A special thank you goes to the Greek RISM working group, which has recently completed the report of the YAML project group on RISM series C, dealing with authority records for institutions. I would also like to pay a special tribute to the highly professional staff of the Editorial Center in Frankfurt, as well as to the major German libraries in Berlin, Munich, and Dresden, the RISM Digital Center in Bern, and other international institutional partners. Last, but certainly not least, the international community cannot be grateful enough to the Mainz Academy and in general the German Union of Academies for the ongoing and generous support to RISM, which RISM has received as part of the Akademien program. We are celebrating RISM achievements during, this, during 70 years at this conference, but we are not here solely to look at the successful part, past. Our focus is also to outline plans to that will result in a sustainable and prosperous future for RISM, a project that is invaluable for music scholars, music musicians, librarians, students, and others around the world. 
We are living in distressing, distressing times and are reminded of the importance of culture in people's lives. Yamal and RISM will continue to work internationally with safeguarding the musical heritage of the world. I have now come to the end of my speech and it is a pleasure for me to hand over a small present from Yamal, a token of our appreciation and admiration. We wish Riz the best of luck for the future. Liebe Mitarbeiter und Freunde von RISM, meine Damen und Herren, grüßt Sie aus Bern. RISM wird 70. So ein Jubiläum gilt es zu feiern und es ist mir eine Ehre, in den Chor der Gratulationen einzustimmen. Dabei singe ich gleich vielstimmig. Mit dem Bass der IMS als deren Generalsekretärin, mit dem Sopran der SMG, der Schweizerischen Musikforschenden Gesellschaft, als deren Zentralpräsidentin, dem Bariton der SAGW, also der Schweizerischen Akademie, der Geistes- und Sozialwissenschaften, auch als deren Präsidentin, dem Mezzosopran als Autorin und Mitarbeiterin an zwei Bänden und dem Tenor als Vorstandsmitglied der Schweizerischen Arbeitsstelle, die seit letztem Jahr zu RISM Digital Center umbenannt wurde. Als RISM 1952 von IMS im Schulterschluss mit der 1951 gegründeten Internationalen Gesellschaft von Musikbibliotheken Jammel aus der Taufe gehoben wurde, saßen den Paten Onkel und Paten Tanten noch die Traumata des Zweiten Weltkrieges in den Knochen. Sie hatten erlebt, wie jahrhundertelang gehegte Musikquellen in kürzester Zeit unwiederbringlich zerstört wurden. Die Zeugnisse der Vergangenheit waren also fragil und es galt gemeinsam dafür zu sorgen, diese zu schützen. Das Mammutunternehmen eines internationalen Musikkataloges wurde als Instrument der Sicherung dieses gefährdeten historischen Erbes gewählt. RISM tat aber weit mehr, als nur festzuhalten und zu zählen. RISM hat zusammen mit Jammel dafür gesorgt, dass sich Musikhistorikerinnen und Bibliothekarinnen international kennenlernen und vernetzen, um ihre Interessen gegenseitig zu stärken. Somit ist RISM auch eine Medizin gewesen, um die traumatisierte Generation der Nachkriegszeit zu heilen und aus ihrer Schockstarre zu lösen. Eine der Schwestergesellschaften, die sehr rasch an dem internationalen Unternehmen Interesse fand, agierte in der neutralen Schweiz. Die SMG, die Schweizerische Musikforschende Gesellschaft, war ab 1954 der Motor für den Beitrag der Schweiz zu RISM. Man kann die Beziehung zwischen SMG und RISM aber auch umgekehrt deuten. Die Möglichkeit, an RISM mitzuwirken, setzte in der Schweiz erstmal die Energien frei, um überhaupt einen Überblick über die eigenen Musikbestände zu gewinnen. 1954 wird zum ersten Mal im 21. Mitteilungsblatt der SMG über die Zusammenarbeit mit der Deutschen Zentralstelle von RISM für die Vorarbeiten zu einem neuen Quellenlexikon, einem neuen Eitner, berichtet. Doch am 30. Juni 1955 entscheiden sich die Kollegen der SMG zunächst für eine von RISM unabhängige Herangehensweise. Denn statt Listen an die Bibliotheken zu verschicken, sollten Arbeitsgruppen gegründet werden, eine Maßnahme, die die SMG finanziell nicht stemmen konnte. Die SMG reagierte rasch mit einem Alternativplan. Man verschickte selber Formulare an die Archive und Bibliotheken in der Schweiz. Binnen kürzester Zeit treffen mehr als 100 solcher Fragebögen ausgefüllt ein die von der Universitätsbibliothek Basel im Auftrag der SMG verwaltet wurden. Kurz und gut, das Unternehmen nimmt Fahrt auf. Unter der Ägide der SMG gelingt es 1955, die acht Jahre junge Schweizerische Geisteswissenschaftliche Gesellschaft, später Schweizerische Akademie der Geistes- und Sozialwissenschaften, zur Unterstützung des Projekts zu gewinnen. Diese nimmt den erst 1952 gegründeten Schweizer Nationalfonds in die Pflicht, der von 1956 an die Mittel zur Verfügung steht, um Dr. Schanzlin vom Schuldienst zu beurlauben, sodass er sich dem Quellenlexikon widmen konnte. Also der erste Schweizer Mitarbeiter von RISM. Dem Nationalfonds wurde es aber bald zu viel. 1962 erwartet man von der SMG bis 1965 zu einem Ende zu kommen. Wir schreiben das Jahr 2022 und ein Ende ist glücklicherweise nicht in Sicht. 
wie man es geschafft hat, RISM bis heute an die Wissenschaftsförderung der Schweiz zu binden, ist ein Krimi der Förderungspolitik von Langzeitunternehmen, in dem sich die SAGW und der SNF wechselseitig die Verantwortung hin und her schoben. Wandte sich der SNF von Langzeitprojekten ab, um sich auf kurzfristige Projektförderung zu fokussieren, agierte die SAGW als Garant für Langlebigkeit, bis der SNF schließlich die Leistungsfähigkeit von RISM Schweiz als Innovationsmaschine entdeckte und es jüngst als Digital Center an sich riss. Der flexiblen und klugen Zusammenarbeit von drei Institutionen über diesen langen Zeitraum hinweg ist es zu verdanken, dass die Mitarbeiter von RISM stets offene Ohren fanden, um RISM Schweiz weiterzuführen und zu entwickeln als Mischwesen zwischen traditionsgebundenem Katalogisierungsprojekt und Vorzeigeprojekt im digitalen Zeitalter. Offensichtlich geht beides. Für mich als Autorin und Mitarbeiterin zweier Kataloge der B-Serie war es ein Privileg, einen Beitrag zum Rolls-Royce musikalischer Kataloge zu leisten. Dabei wurde mir immer bewusster, inwiefern wir als Katalogisierende eine Verantwortung für die Bestimmung von Relevanz von Quellen und für die Interpretation von deren Inhalt für die Benutzer haben. Quellen sind keine tote Materie. Sie reagieren auf unsere sich stets wandelnden epistemologischen und hermeneutischen Bedürfnisse. Daher ist es kein Wunder, dass wir es mit einer Arbeit mit offenem Ende zu tun haben, bei dem die Publikationen zwischen Etappen im Weg sind, das Ziel aber der Weg selbst darstellt. Ein langer Weg liegt hinter uns und ein noch längerer Weg möge vor uns liegen. Ad multos annos. Herzlichen Glückwunsch zum Geburtstag. Ladies and Gentlemen, dear President Schechter, dear President Schwind, dear guests, dear friends of RISM in the hall and online. On behalf of the International RISM Associations Board of Directors and the team of the RISM Editorial Center, I welcome you most warmly to this anniversary conference. When we planned this event in the spring, It seemed very bold to hope that we would be able to gather here in person in early October. In the last two years, such hopes repeatedly proved to be deceptive. Thus, I am all the more pleased that our courage has been rewarded and that after three years, we are once again able to hold a major RISM event here in the beautiful rooms of the Mainz Academy of Sciences and Literature. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank its president, Professor Anderl, and the Secretary General, Professor Geisler, very warmly for their hospitality. It confirms the great support that RISM receives from the Academy also beyond its funding and for which we are very grateful. We have 70 years of RISM to celebrate this year. And we have heard quite a bit from previous speakers about the history of this singular global network in the service of musical source cataloging. All of us who are committed to the cause of RISM can feel flattered to hear these congratulations and we accept them gratefully. We also see them as an inspiration to work hard to ensure that this long success story continues. In fact, I'm pleased to make mention uh, <coughs> the, uh, of the recent recommendation that the funding of the Editorial Center by the German Acad Academic, uh, Academy Union be extended for another two years. This is wonderful news, but after 2025, other structures will be needed in which the work can continue. Thanks to the ongoing support of our partners, in finding alternative solutions for the future. However, I'm optimistic that in five years we will be able to celebrate RISM's 75th anniversary in as a good mood, uh, mood as we are in today. And please let me mention these partners one by one, the SBB Berlin uh, and uh, Marti especially Martina Rebmann, the BSB Munich, Rainer Nägele and Jürgen Diet, the Slup Dresden, Barbara Wiermann, 
the German RISM working group, Nicole Schwind, and the RISM Digital Center in Bern, Laurent Puget. Thank you all very much for your support in so many areas. <laughs> to the same extent, our thanks are due to our two patron societies, YAML and the IMF. The greetings from their respective president and secretary general once, uh, once again made clear their great solidarity and we were able to use the two conferences of the so societies in Prague and in Athens this year to offer further festive events and celebrate together this round anniversary with our worldwide community. There were also nice birthday, birthday gifts for RISM on its 70th, uh, 70th birthday. The RISM Digital Center launched the first version of the search interface RISM Online, just in time for the YAML meeting in Prague. This is meant to serve as a supplement to the OPAC provided by the BSB Munich and opens up many new types of research possibilities. Besides, as mentioned earlier, on the occasion of RISM's 70th uh, anniversary, Nicole Schwind took on the task of editing a special issue of the journal Fontis, which addresses various fields of current source research and is just about to be published. We are very much looking forward to this issue and thank Nicole very much for this wonderful gift. And furthermore, after the, a long time, uh, a blue volume has appeared again under serial number B18, the catalogue Les Sources Manuscrites des Séquences et Prose Notées uh, 9e à 16e siècle, France, by Christian Meyer, one of our most loyal authors, was published. The volume shows that even in the digital age we believe in the analog book and in fields where it makes sense we are happy to continue this pillar of our tradition. In this, we are greatly supported by Henle Verlag, whose publishing director, Wolf Dieter Seifert, is also associated with RISM as our former president. Unfortunately, he cannot be here in person today, and so I am all the more pleased that he has sent us a short message of greeting, which I would like to read out to you. Dear friends, so, so I'm now citing uh, the letter by Wolf-Dieter Seifert. Dear friends and colleagues at RISM, dear participants of the International Con Conference celebrating 70 years of RISM, I'm sending you my warmest congratulations on this remarkable jubilee of RISM. The founding fathers and mothers of RISM, as well as the following generations of librarians and musicologists who collaborated and worked with and for RISM, can be really proud of this unique and extraordinary global project. For incredible 70 years now, you have been constantly collecting, selecting, evaluating, cataloging, and publishing the necessary bibliographical data of the giant treasure of musical sources around the world for the benefit of so many users. Right from the beginning, Henle has been your publishing partner. As many of you know, uh, we are responsible for the B-series. If I count correctly, 33 volumes have been produced so far. Many of them have become musicological reference books. The latest one is really hot off the press, and you actually you saw it. Uh, it is good to know that the story continues, and we at Henle are very much looking forward to our mutual future. Let me also personally congratulate and greet all of you in my former position as RISM's past president. May RISM have a bright future because we all know your mission is not completed yet. I wish you fruitful days in minds to the benefit of the wonderful organization RISM. Dr. Wolf-Dieter Seifert, Manage Managing Director of Hindle Verlag and past president of RISM. We thank you, dear Wolf-Dieter, if you see us uh, now or later, very much for remembering us. 
I have just mentioned the global community, which is RISM's special asset and, so to speak, uh, its DNA. In Prague and Athens, RISM joined events of these communities and now many representatives of those communities have come to celebrate RISM's anniversary with us here in Mainz. We look forward to your sharing with us your thoughts and research on musical sources, past and future. Yet another country is prominently represented. From Hungary comes Balas Mikuzi, who took over the management of the editorial center from Klaus Keil in 2020 and continues Mr. Keil's long work with enormous commitment and success. To you, dear Balas, and the whole team, I express my sincere thanks on behalf of the board of, for the organization of this meeting. As always, you have done the work of preparation calmly and very professionally. Thank you very much. <laughs> With that, it is now my honor and pleasure to open this international conference celebrating 70 years of RISM and to introduce the RISM lecture. We established the RISM lecture format during the pandemic so, <clears throat> that we could, the, so that we would not lose touch with our community during these difficult times. It has been a great success, so it seemed only logical to continue it here in a hybrid form. After the first two lectures, dedicated to the Biblioteca Apostolica Vaticana and the Berlin State Library, res respectively, we are now moving to the American continent for the first time. Our three speakers can rely on experiences gathered while cataloging the music archives of the Mexico City Cathedral, and they will discuss the unique formal characteristics of the sources found. Needless to say, most of these sources can now be searched also in RISM, being the first fruits of a corporation we sealed in Mexico City in November 2017. And I very warmly remember this event and, and the visit in Mexico City. And now it is my extraordinary pleasure to personally welcome Lucero Enriquez and Drew Edward Davis and of course, I also extend my warmest greetings to Anja Lea Czernawski, who is joining us via Zoom. Before I hand over the floor, I would like to briefly introduce our speakers. Lucero Enriquez graduated from the Bach Conservatorium in Amsterdam as a solo harpsichordist under the direction of Gustav Leonhard. She specialized in the Baroque period at the Edward von Beinum Stichting. She studied composition with Rodolfo Halfter, Julian Orbon, and Ton de Leu. In 2007, she graduated as PhD in art history at the UNAM in Mexico City. She is a full-time senior researcher in the area of colonial music at the Institute of Aesthetic Research at the UNAM and harpsichord and basso continuo teacher at the Faculty of Music of the same university. Since 2001, she coordinates Musicat, a seminar for New Spain and independent Mexico music, an international and interdisciplinary network of specialists and students dedicated to the study of music from the period, uh, uh, from the period 1521 to 1858, based in the Institute of Aesthetic Research. She has written music for films and stage works. In 2012, she published A Warehouse of Secrets, Painting, Pharmacy, Illustration, Puebla, 1797, which won the 2013, in 2013, the National Chamber of Mexican Editorial Industry Prize for Editorial Art in the Genre of Art. She has published in co-working with Edward Davis and Anja Lia Czarnawski, four volumes of the Catalogo de Obras de Musica de la Catedral de México, as well as several articles focused on cultural musicology. In 2014, she received the Sor Juana Inés de la Cruz distinction granted by the UNAM, and in 2016, the National University Award for Research in Arts. 
Fru Edward Davis is a music historian specializing in New Spain. He is chair of the Department of Music Studies and Associate Professor of Musicology at the Northwestern University's Bienen School of Music, as well as academic coordinator of the Seminario de Musica en la Nueva España y el México Independiente in Mexico City. Among his publications are editions of Villancicos uh, from Mexico City by Manuel de Sumaya and Santiago Bioni's complete works, then the Catalogo de la Colección de, de Música del Archivo Histórico de la Archiótesis de Durango, and chapters in collections such as Music and Urban City in Colonial Latin America, Cambridge 2011, and The Rutledge Companion to the Hispanic Enlightenment, Enlightenment 2019. As mentioned uh, already, he uh, contributed, uh, he worked together with uh, Lucero Enriquez and Amelia Czarnarski in, uh, 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 in the Catalogo. And uh, with Javier Marin Lopez, he has initiated a partial edition of the works by Ignacio Jerusalem, which has now reached six volumes. He is also currently president of the Society for, in, for 18th Century Music. Drew will then also read out Anjalia Czarnowski's contribution and briefly introduce her in that context. So I stop here, give you the floor, and I'm very much look, looking forward to your risen lecture. <laughs> 